Molecular scale electronics, also called single molecule electronics, is a branch of nanotechnology that uses single molecules, or nanoscale collections of single molecules, as electronic components. Because single molecules constitute the smallest stable structures imaginable this miniaturization is the ultimate goal for shrinking electrical circuits. The field is often referred to as simply molecular electronics, but this term is also used to refer to the distantly related field of conductive polymers and organic electronics, which uses the properties of molecules to affect the bulk properties of immaterial. A nomenclature distinction has been suggested so that molecular materials for electronics refers to this latter field of bulk applications while molecular scale electronics refers to the nanoscale single molecule applications discussed here. Fundamental concepts Conventional electronics have traditionally been made from bulk materials. Ever since its invention in 1958, the performance and complexity of integrated circuits has been growing exponentially and has forced the feature sizes of the embedded components to shrink accordingly. As the structures become smaller, the sensitivity for deviations increases and in a few generations, when the minimum feature sizes reaches 13 nanometers. The composition of the devices must be controlled to a precision of a few atoms for the devices to work, with the bulk approach having inherent limitations in addition to becoming increasingly demanding and expensive. The idea was born that the components could instead be built up atom for atom in a chemistry lab as opposed to carving them out of bulk material. This idea is the reasoning behind molecular electronics with the ultimate miniaturization being components contained in single molecules. In single molecule electronics, the bulk material is replaced by single molecules. That is, instead of creating structures by removing or applying material after a pattern scaffold, the atoms are put together in a chemistry lab. This way billions of billions of copies are made simultaneously while the composition of molecules are controlled down to the last atom. The molecules utilized have properties that resemble traditional electronic components such as a wire, transistor or rectifier. Single molecule electronics is an emerging field and entire electronic circuits consisting exclusively of molecular sized compounds are still very far from being realized. However, the continuous demand for more computing power together with the inherent limitations of the present-day lithographic methods make the transition seem unavoidable. Currently, the focus is on discovering molecules with interesting properties and on finding ways to obtaining reliable and reproducible contacts between the molecular components and the bulk material of the electrodes. Theoretical Basis Molecular electronics operates in the quantum realm of distances less than 100 nanometers. The miniaturization down to single molecules brings the scale down to a regime where quantum effects are important, as opposed to the case in conventional electronic components, where electrons can be filled in or drawn out more or less like a continuous flow of charge. The transfer of a single electron alters the system significantly. This means that when an electron has been transferred from the source electrode to the molecule, the molecule gets charged up and makes it much harder for the next one to transfer. The significant amount of energy due to charging must be taken into account when making calculations about the electronic properties of the setup and is highly sensitive to distances to conducting surfaces nearby. The theory of single molecule devices is particularly interesting since the system under consideration is an open quantum system in non-equilibrium. In the low bias voltage regime, the non-equilibrium nature of the molecular junction can be ignored, and the current voltage characteristics of the device can be calculated using the equilibrium electronic structure of the system. However, in stronger bias regimes a more sophisticated treatment is required, as there is no longer a variational principle. In the elastic tunneling case, the formalism of Rolf Lander can be used to calculate the transmission through the system as a function of bias voltage, and hence the current. 
in inelastic tunneling, an elegant formalism based on the non-equilibrium Green's functions of Leo Kadanoff and Gordon Baim, and independently by Leonid Keldish was put forth by Nedwin Green and Yigal Mir. This Mirwin Green formulation has been used to great success in the molecular electronics community to examine the more difficult and interesting cases where the transient electron exchanges energy with the molecular system. Further, connecting single molecules reliably to a larger scale circuit has proven a great challenge and constitutes a significant hindrance to commercialization. Examples Common for molecules utilized in molecular electronics is that the structures contain a lot of alternating double and single bonds. The reason for this is that such a pattern delocalizes the molecular orbitals making it possible for electrons to move freely over the conjugated area. Wires The sole purpose of molecular wires is to electrically connect different parts of a molecular electrical circuit. As the assembly of these and the connection to a macroscopic circuit is still not mastered, the focus of research in single molecule electronics is primarily on the functionalized molecules. Molecular wires are characterized by containing no functional groups and are hence composed of plane repetitions of a conjugated building block. Among these are the carbon nanotubes that are quite large compared to the other suggestions but have shown very promising electrical properties. The main problem with the molecular wires is to obtain good electrical contact with the electrodes so that the electrons can move freely in and out of the wire. Transistors Single molecule transistors are fundamentally different from the ones known from bulk electronics. The gate in a conventional transistor determines the conductance between the source and drain electrode by controlling the density of charge carriers between them, whereas the gate in a single molecule transistor controls the feasibility of a single electron to jump on and off the molecule by modifying the energy of the molecular orbitals. One of the effects of this difference is that the single molecule transistor is almost binary. It is either on or off. This opposes its bulk counterparts, which have quadratic responses to gate voltage. It is the quantization of charge into electrons that is responsible for the markedly different behavior compared to bulk electronics. For this to work, the electronic orbitals on the transistor molecule cannot be too well integrated with the orbitals on the electrodes. If they are, an electron cannot be said to be located on the molecule or the electrodes and the molecule will function as a wire, a popular group of molecules that can work as the semiconducting channel material in a molecular transistor, is the oligopoly phenylene vinylenes that works by the Coulomb blockade mechanism when placed between the source and drain electrode in an appropriate way. Fullerenes work by the same mechanism and have also been commonly utilized. Semiconducting carbon nanotubes have also been demonstrated to work as channel material but although molecular, these molecules are sufficiently large to behave almost as bulk semiconductors. The size of the molecules and the low temperature the measurements are being conducted it makes the quantum mechanical states well defined. It is therefore being researched if the quantum mechanical properties can be used for more advanced purposes than simple transistors. Physicists at the University of Arizona, in collaboration with chemists from the University of Madrid, have designed a single molecule transistor using a ring-shaped molecule similar to benzene. Physicists at Canada's National Institute for Nanotechnology have designed a single molecule transistor using styrene. Both groups expect their respective devices to function at room temperature and to be controlled by a single electron. Rectifiers Molecular rectifiers are mimics of their bulk counterparts and have an asymmetric construction so that the molecule can accept electrons in one end but not the other. The molecules have an electron donor in one end and an electron acceptor in the other. This way, the unstable state D plus A minus will be more readily made than D minus A plus. The result is that an electric current can be drawn through the molecule if the electrons are added through the acceptor end, but not so easily if the reverse is attempted. Techniques 
One of the biggest problems with measuring on single molecules is to establish reproducible electrical contact with only one molecule and doing so without shortcutting the electrodes. Because the current photolithographic technology is unable to produce electrode gaps small enough to contact both ends of the molecules tested, alternative strategies are put into use. Molecular gaps One way to produce electrodes with a molecular size gap between them is break junctions, in which a thin electrode is stretched until it breaks. Another is electromigration. Here a current is led through a thin wire until it melts and the atoms migrate to produce the gap. Further, the reach of conventional photolithography can be enhanced by chemically etching or depositing metal on the electrodes. Probably the easiest way to conduct measurements on several molecules is to use the tip of a scanning tunneling microscope to contact molecules adhered at the other end to a metal substrate. Anchoring A popular way to anchor molecules to the electrodes is to make use of sulfur's high affinity to gold. In these setups, the molecules are synthesized so that sulfur atoms are placed strategically to function as crocodile clips connecting the molecules to the gold electrodes. Though useful, the anchoring is non-specific and thus anchors the molecules randomly to all gold surfaces. Further, the contact resistance is highly dependent on the precise atomic geometry around the site of anchoring and thereby inherently compromises the reproducibility of the connection. To circumvent the latter issue, experiments have shown that fullerenes could be a good candidate for use instead of sulfur because of the large conjugated pi system that can electrically contact many more atoms at once than a single atom of sulfur. Fullerene nanoelectronics in Polymers, classical organic molecules are composed of both carbon and hydrogen. They are obtained from petrol and can often be synthesized in large amounts. Most of these molecules are insulating when their length exceeds a few nanometers. However, naturally occurring carbon is conducting. In particular, graphite is conducting. From a theoretical point of view, graphite is a semi-metal, a category in between metals and semiconductors. It has a layered structure, each sheet being one atom thick. Between each sheet, the interactions are weak enough to allow an easy manual cleavage. Tailoring the graphite sheet to obtain well-defined nanometer-sized objects remains a challenge. However, by the close of the 20th century, SEMIS were exploring methods to fabricate extremely small graphitic objects that could be considered single molecules. After studying the interstellar conditions under which carbon is known to form clusters, Richard Smalley's group set up an experiment in which graphite was vaporized using laser irradiation. Mass spectrometry revealed that clusters containing specific magic numbers of atoms were stable, in particular those clusters of 60 atoms. Harry Croto, an English chemist who assisted in the experiment, suggested a possible geometry for these clusters, atoms covalently bound with the exact symmetry of a soccer ball, coined Buckminster Fullerenes, Bucky Balls or C60. The clusters retained some properties of graphite, such as conductivity. These objects were rapidly envisioned as possible building blocks for molecular electronics. Problems Artifacts when trying to measure electronic characteristics of molecules Artificial phenomena can occur that can be hard to distinguish from truly molecular behavior. Before they were discovered these artifacts have mistakenly been published as being features pertaining to the molecules in question. Applying a voltage drop in the order of volts across a nanometer-sized junction results in a very strong electrical field. The field can cause metal atoms to migrate and eventually close the gap by a thin filament, which can be broken again when carrying a current. The two levels of conductance imitate molecular switching between a conductive and an isolating state of a molecule. Another encountered artifact is when the electrodes undergo chemical reactions due to the high field strength in the gap. When the bias is reversed the reaction will cause hysteresis in the measurements that can be interpreted as being of molecular origin. 
A metallic grain between the electrodes can act as a single electron transistor by the mechanism described above thus resembling the characteristics of a molecular transistor. This artifact is especially common with nanogaps produced by the electromigration technique. Commercialization One of the biggest hindrances for single molecule electronics to be commercially exploited is the lack of techniques to connect a molecular size circuit to bulk electrodes in a way that gives reproducible results. At the current state, the difficulty of connecting single molecules vastly outweighs any possible performance increase that could be gained from such shrinkage. The picture becomes even worse if the molecules are to have a certain spatial orientation and or have multiple poles to connect. Also problematic is the fact that some measurements on single molecules are carried out in cryogenic temperatures, which is very energy consuming. This is done to reduce signal noise enough to measure the faint currents of single molecules.